Hey everybody, tonight I wanted to do a little video, I'm not sure what I'm going to call it, possibly it's amazing. And what's amazing to me is um, the basic tenets of the faith of who Jesus Christ is, why he came to save men from sin and put them up and put them right with God. It's just incredible, absolutely incredible to me, the ignorance that exists in Christianity by people who claim his name. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that uh, I'm the most brilliant theologian that ever existed in the world, because I'm certainly not. I am a humble, I have a humble and broken heart before the Lord, and this is, in fact, what allows me to hear him so well. The fact that I didn't obtain a world stature. Um, you know, seek the low place, and that's where you where where you find the Lord, and that's that's what I've experienced throughout my life. Um, simply because I was enough to be elect of God for salvation. Um, but you know, I, I don't quite even know how to say this because there's so much rampant confusion on what Christianity is, what being, what knowing Jesus Christ is, who Jesus Christ is. It's amazing to me. And that's what I wanted to speak on a little bit tonight. Now, first off, Jesus Christ is known as the second Adam. Okay. And the reason he's known as the second Adam is because when man sinned in disobedience to God, Adam and Eve in the garden of Eden, they were, uh, they experienced death, a death of separation, and of course the serpent told them, you know, when, she, when he tempted Eve uh, with the fruit, which I believe is figurative, but um, he said, surely you won't die, and, uh, you know, eat of the tree of good and evil, the tree of knowledge, surely you won't die, but it was done in independence and rebellion against God, and of course she ate of it, and then... Uh, Adam, her husband, um, tried to shield her from the Lord and the Lord's anger, which, which is, of course, was his sin. I, I guess, um, I guess, you know, that was, he made an idol out of the woman would be my best stab at what happened there. Uh, even though the scripture is not clear about it, but the important thing is that there was, we all know it, Abel and Cain that God required the sacrifice of blood in the Old Testament, in the Old Covenant with his people, the Lamb of God, you know, the perfect lamb or um, ram or, or whatever was to be sacrificed um, unto the Lord for the forgiveness of sins. And God promised throughout the Old Testament he would send the Lamb of God the Messiah in the person of Jesus Christ, as we know as Christians, to uh, be the atonement for all that uh, would believe in faith in his death and resurrection and his shedding of the blood upon the cross. And this is what gives men the uh, opportunity to be put right with God since the fall in Genesis. So when we be, Jesus told Nicodemus, a man must be born again of spirit uh, to uh, enter the kingdom of God. He is a new creation. The Bible tells us our sins are as far as from the east as the west. We're white as snow because we are washed in the blood of the lamb. And, and that's all nice religious talk, but in actuality, it is a spiritual event that happens in faith when we confess our sins and need for the Lord Jesus Christ. And all that the Father uh, gives to Jesus will come to me, Jesus said. And this is exactly uh, what occurs. Now, there's different views on uh, who, of course, can find salvation from the Reformed view, which I believe is the most correct doctrinal teaching that is taught in seminary to the Arminian view that feels that anybody can come. And then, of course, there's a universal view, and there's all kinds of flavors of that, that 
that teach, um, you know, that hell is an era of correction, that all humanity will come after death. But um, to the best of my knowledge, that really doesn't square with um, other parts of the Bible to me. Uh, the Lord hasn't really shown me, so I really, I really can't say. But I do know the things that the Lord Jesus Christ has shown me in my spirit because I do have a personal relationship with him. My sheep hear my voice. And what I've discovered is, to my chagrin, is that most ministers, most people that go and get educated formally, and understand I'm not against education. I'm not against uh accreditation where people know what they're talking about because God knows there's plenty of people that don't know what they're talking about when it comes to the Bible and the Lord Jesus Christ and even more or on the broad road and what what amazes me is the well-educated people I have found a lot of them I dare say most of them today that are broad roaders they have I don't know. I, I can see where Jesus Christ hasn't enlightened them to who he is in, in, in a personal way. They are not disciples. They are religious people. They were educated people. And, and the things of God are foolishness to, you know, uh, to the natural man because they're spiritually discerned. But So I'm here to talk about the precepts of this faith. Number one, Jesus Christ had to be totally God. And totally man. He was born by a virgin, the Virgin Mary. This is the Holy Spirit conceived him in her womb. And at that point, uh, the Father had a son. The, the Holy Spirit, the Father who is in heaven, Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. And what makes that difference about anybody else in creation is that we are all sons and daughters of Adam after the fall. We are separated from God unto death. People say, well, you know, um, God made me this way. Well, that's very, very poor theology because, number one, <laughs> God didn't make anybody. Uh, God allows life to be given um, through... Uh, through conception, and he also knows who is his while while they are in the womb. But to say that God made me a sinner, God made me um, anything less than than perfect, uh, you're you're blaming God for something he didn't do. That's the fall of mankind, and it's amazing to me that people that claim the name of Jesus Christ, claim to be Christians, don't even know the basics of the faith. No, we're all born sinners. We're all born depraved in some way or another. And I'm not going to draw a contrast of different types of sin other than to say that we all are born depraved and we're all in need of a Savior. And so we have to come to the point where we realize our transgressions, where we realize we're not right with God, that we need God. And the Holy Spirit prepares our hearts to come to that point, it's not a work that men do in and of themselves. It is a work that God does within them in bringing them to the Lord Jesus Christ, to the point of repentance and salvation, and then being regenerated in him as a new creation. So the bottom line is the whole idea that we're all sons and daughters of God in a general sense I guess you could say God created everything, but it's just not true because we're not sons and daughters of God. In fact, Jesus Christ said, uh, you have, must be born again to be a son of daughter of God in spirit. No, we are sons and daughters of Adam. And Adam and Eve fell into sin. They are controlled by their father, the devil. So if you want to get technical, uh, somebody who is not born again, is only of their father, the devil. They cannot see truth. They cannot communicate with God. They are cut off, just like in the Genesis story. But the, the love of God is to send his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, for remissions of sins for those who would believe on him. Now, I 
have been a Reformed Calvinist for years. Once saved, always saved. I think that, uh, you know, the, um, uh, the perseverance of the saints thing. I think that Reformed theology is the closest to the correct doctrine uh, scripturally. However, I feel that you cannot uh, discount I am the vine, you are the van branches, abide in me and I in you. And if you don't abide in me, you're cut off and pruned. Uh, you know, the Father cuts off and prunes the things of God. This is this is in the sanctification process and being becoming more Christ-like. But we, yet we are not robots. We can um, commit blasphemy against the Holy Spirit by saying, by in our in our heart of hearts saying, "I will not follow you anymore. I will do this or I will do that." And these are all the testings of our hearts. This is what Jesus meant when he when he talked about the rich young ruler giving up all he had to follow him, um, the scribe uh, that wanted to follow him. Uh, Jesus said we had to follow him once we came to him. Yes, salvation, um, being regenerated, is a work of God and God alone. And it is not a work of the flesh, do-gooder uh, type of things. Um, no, but it is a learning utter dependency in everything we do upon the Lord Jesus Christ and actually listening in obedience and moving in his spirit. This is what we have to do. We don't do it independently by going to seminary and learning all these, uh, I don't know, these different directions on how to get to heaven because uh, that's, that's what you have today out there in the church. You have different denominations, different beliefs, different uh, um, concepts of what it is to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. But I'm here to tell you that following the Lord Jesus Christ is done in spirit and spirit alone. If we are his, we must learn to listen as Abraham did and be obedient to God as Abraham did. Jesus Christ is our salvation. We must enter in to the holies of holies through him and only by him. We cannot do it independently of him, of him by our own actions or even by how well educated we are. Now, I've had people attack me because I've spoken the truth of God. I do know the precepts of the faith. I do know uh, what it means to be a Christian. I do know what it means to be regenerated, sanctified, born again. I know what it means to walk in the Spirit. I've seen healings. I've seen demons. I've seen all kinds of things in my life. And most people, and I've been to churches, and I says, anybody else seen that? And nobody would raise their hand. And the reason is, is because the best that I can figure is because their hearts really aren't in to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. They might be scared, or they might have to give up something, uh, and they're, or be put out of their comfort zone if they really would listen to the Holy Spirit within them and follow him in obedience. That's why Jesus says, I desire obedience rather than sacrifice, rather than worship service. No, I desire obedience. Listen to me. The Lord Jesus Christ told me when I was trying to get ordained, as an independent Episcopal and some other ministers, when I after I had my NDE, he appeared to me again. Um, I could hardly see it out of the side of my eye, but I knew it was the Lord because I'd seen it uh, during my near-death experience, and I also saw it during my pastoral vision years before that. And I walked towards it, and I and I got on my knees, and, and I could feel the presence of the Lord there. And I didn't understand it because I thought I was doing something for the Lord and becoming a minister. Let's get credentialed with a good, respectable organization. And Dr. Gross, who taught me for six years in street ministry, DDTAC, PhD, said, Roland, don't you see it's the Lord Jesus Christ saying, follow me, follow me, Roland. And that's what I'm hard after doing. And brothers and sisters, it has cost me to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Because it means that I can't fit in to a particular group. Well, this is how we do things. Or this is how, you know, uh, um, our theology, this is how we think. We compartmentalize the Lord. We figure it out and we have this nice, neat order of how we do things. And brothers and sisters, if you're the Lord's, you don't follow men. You follow the Lord. 
you follow spirit. Yes, there are spiritual authority and spiritual elders, but how do you tell who a spiritual elder is? You tell by the experience and by the power uh, um, that shows in their life. You know that they know the Lord. You know that they know the way. It's not just uh, where they have a THD or a PhD or anything. That has nothing to do with it. You have people that aren't even born again that have those kind of credentialing. Um, I have some, oh, I don't know, people would laugh at it because I have some honorary doctorates. And I hardly ever talk about it because uh, I know how the world looks at that. But that's something of the world. That's something of the world. But I'm here to tell you that Jesus Christ had to be totally God and totally man. He had to die on a cross for our sins. And if you're his, you will come to the point of salvation. But the, the, the question is, will you follow him? This is why Paul talked about running the good race. This is why Christ talked about the different types of seeds, the sower and the seeds, the different types of ground, the shallow ground, the hard ground. And it just amazes me. Um, it just amazes me, and I'll be honest with you, I was on a, um, uh, an ex-homosexual site, and it, it amazed me how ignorant these people that claim the name of the Lord Jesus Christ were. They thought, well, God created me like this. That's nonsense. God doesn't create anybody. Uh, um, the only person that God created, if you will, was the person, the Lord Jesus Christ. In the womb of Mary. That's who God created. The rest of them were offspring of Adam from after the fall. And once again, this is why we have to come to Jesus Christ, who's known as the second Adam, for our remission of sins in faith by grace of God. It's not something we can do. It's something we have to um, depend on the Lord to do through us. And this makes no sense to the natural mind because man wants to be in command and control of his life. And he doesn't really want God to be. And that's why Jesus Christ says, and few that it will be that find it. The road is narrow and few that it will be that find it. It also says in the end days, there will be many with a form of godliness, but not the power thereof. Stay away from people like this. So I'm just amazed by the extreme ignorance of the faith that, 50 years ago, people would have known these basic truths of who Jesus Christ was and why he came to die. Um, and they have no idea. It's been spun uh, to make it comfortable to whatever, uh, I don't know, flavor of sin you're in, I guess. Whether it's, um, whether it's uh, I don't know, sexual sin or uh, pride of life or um, whatever it is, people will disregard uh, parts of the scripture and and only look at the parts that they want to see. And that's them doing it independently of the Lord. They are not the Lord's. If you don't follow the Lord in spirit through the atonement of the Lord Jesus Christ, if you don't know the Lord and hear the Lord and experience the Lord, you are not his. Or you have chosen the broad road and not listening to him because it's easier on you. And me, I'm an ex-soldier. I had ND in my 20 years in the Army and two days after my ordination. And I made up my mind. I said, Lord, I don't want to be pew stuffing in some church. I want to follow you. I want to know. Uh, I want the enemy to know who I am. I want to be effective. And uh, a week after I had my major heart attack and they didn't make, expect me to survive, a black female nurse came to me and said, Mr. Dell, the enemy knows who you are, but it will not stop what God has planned for you. And I was floored because that was a private prayer. And I'm also just as floored uh, of people who claim his name, well-educated people that are going to tell me I don't know what I'm talking about. Because, you know, I, there, one man wrote something about be ye transformed. People get stuck into their old habits. Be ye transformed. And I wrote him back and I said, as a simple theological point, people cannot be transformed unless they had the power of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit working in their life. And the man had a fit because the man wanted to do it independently of the truth of God. You cannot be transformed. You are not a new creation unless you have the Holy Spirit doing a work within you. God bless Lord Jesus.
these uh, people's Bible is atrocious. And you also have pink and fluffy uh, Jesus. And one of the things that um, one of the things I've noticed the the, the uh, devil has done is he's uh, put man. Uh, I'm talking about men out of authority positions spiritually. Authority positions were given to men. They were not given to women and children. And, uh, you know, people don't like that because, oh, well, that's discriminatory or that's Paul. No, that's the way that God created um, mankind. And there are certain orders and certain ways that the Lord works. And there are certain ways that he doesn't work. And I'm telling you the basic foundational truths of the Bible, and I don't care what has happened in this last generation because they're wrong. God never changes, and he never will. And we can only have salvation in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ if we have been chosen, if we have experienced salvation, and if we choose to follow him in obedience. Now, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins when we screw up because God knows we all do. But it's a matter of the heart. Our heart is tested. And the question is, will you follow him or will you follow something else on a divergent path, which Jesus called the broad road? God bless you all. Good night.